Occasionally you run across a ship flying a beautiful rainbow of flags. How awesome. But what do they mean? Flag etiquette is a really interesting topic for vessels, and there are some guidelines and rules, but surprisingly a lot is left up to interpretation. Different organizations and nations might have different guidance on flag etiquette. But a great resource for questions about flags is Publication 102. This particular one is put out by the U.S. National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and it answers all kinds of questions about flags and other types of signaling, such as flashing light signaling, uh, radio signaling, sound signaling, and yes, flag signaling. This publication is designed to alleviate concerns about communication barriers at sea. No matter what language a mariner may speak, there's a way to translate between them using flags and certain meanings for certain flag combinations. This particular version is published by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I've included a link um, if you want to download a copy of it for your own personal professional library. Broadly speaking, each flag corresponds to a letter and each pennant corresponds to a number. Single letter demonstrations of the flag correspond to urgent or very common communications issues. For example, the code flag Oscar is going to indicate that a person has gone overboard. The code flag Yankee is going to refer to the situation in which I am dragging my anchor. So you might want to keep clear. Double letter signals correspond to more detailed or nuanced sentences. For example, Charlie November is going to correspond to you should give all possible assistance. Those are my initials, and as a teacher, I think it's really appropriate. So I always encourage people to look up their initials in the International Code of Signals and see what type of personality the book tells you you should have. Sometimes it's not very good. Triple letter signals are going to correspond to medical situations, and since they're so nuanced and urgent, it's important that they get the signals right from vessel to vessel, and so there's a big section on medical ones. For example, Mike Charlie India is going to correspond to a situation um, that the breathing is irregular. And there's a whole variety of uh, medical flags, they all begin with M, that can detail just about anything that's happening with a patient to save time in a rescue situation. You can also spell things out in plain language, as long as you let the other vessel know what you're about to spell out. For example, up here, these are plain language uh, flags, and they each correspond to a letter, and they spell something out. Signals can also be modified in certain cases. For example, up here you can see that there's three letter alphas in there. And what if I don't carry three flags with alpha on them in my uh, inventory? Well, there's things called substitutes. So here you can see an image from Wikipedia about how the substitutes actually work. So if you run out of flags, you can use the substitute um, and that will allow the other vessel to understand what you're trying to spell out. For passing along navigational information, it's critical that no mistakes are made and attention to detail is followed here. That's why Pub 102 is very helpful when passing and translating signals. For example, in a distress situation, if you knew where a distress vessel was, but you weren't quick enough to get there, you could hoist up a latitude and a longitude along with directions to maybe get a faster vessel um, headed that direction, or maybe even an aircraft. For example, if you had Charlie Hotel, Lima 2537 November, and then Golf 4015 Whiskey, that would indicate the position and kind of what's going on. This is going to translate as the vessel indicated as requiring assistance is located in position latitude 25 degrees 37 minutes north, longitude 40 degrees 15 minutes west. You can see how complicated these flag hoists can get, especially in a situation where you're trying to pass along positional information. Before this publication, flags and groups of flags were nation or group specific, and it wasn't until about 1855 when the British tried to get an international coalition together regarding international signals. It didn't really catch on until about the early 1930s after World War I, and it's been continually revised by a variety of non-governmental organizations since then, uh, until the culmination of this one, which is 1969 edition, and it's updated regularly by each nation's uh, government. Publication 102 is a fascinating read. I highly recommend you download a copy for your library. It's free on the NGA website. And um, it doesn't answer our original question, though, about the beautiful flags that are hoisted by vessels uh, on certain occasions. Well, for that, the truth is we need to go to another publication, especially for naval vessels, which is NTP 
13 Bravo. It's a naval technical pub, and it indicates in there that there's certain occasions when a vessel will dress ship, or specifically, full dress ship. So the vessels you've seen here are full dressed, and that really happens officially on uh, President's Day and Independence Day in the United States. But you can also hoist it for changes of command of naval vessels, or as I mentioned at the beginning, there's actually not a lot of guidance on when you can do this for civilian vessels, so you could theoretically hoist these anytime. Does the order of the flags matter? Well, yes and no. In NTP 13 Bravo, there is a specific order, but it doesn't mean anything. So you're supposed to hoist them in a specific order, uh, but it is pretty much meaningless and specifically designed to avoid meaning, to avoid offending somebody inadvertently. But for you as a civilian mariner, there's nothing saying you can't hoist these in a certain order. And uh, it's a great way to give a little subtle um, message to maybe your boat neighbors in the marina that they might not understand what's happening.